Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Lisa Martin with Silver Spring Town Center, and we are so happy to have you joining us for, for this special um, artist talk, The Magic of Andean Surrealism with artist Pepe Incarasta, who just led a wonderful painting workshop on Veterans Plaza yesterday as part of our 10th annual Harvest Moon Festival. Pepe is just wonderfully talented, as many of you already know, and we'll see for your own eyes. Um, be just before we get started, I had a couple of announcements to make. Um, we're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with this program, as because Pepe is actually from um, Peru, and from the Andes, and so we um, also have him as an invited panelist on our program next Monday evening, Culinary Traditions of the Diaspora Latinoamericana, which will be 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. next Monday, October 2nd. And that will be hosted by Omar Lazo with Los Choros Restaurant. So, and there, there will be an array, an array of other community members representing the Latin American diaspora, sharing their foods, food, family traditions, and food memories. It's it's always a fun time, as you know. We've done it for for various cultural groups, and um, we keep getting more demand for more. <laughs> so, um, we also have. Um, other events coming up, our autumn calendar, which I will I will put into the chat. Um, we, we will have a virtual art presentation hosted by artist Marcy Wolf Hubbard on Thursday, October 12th. It's um, celebrating the colors of autumn. And we invite you, if you're an artist, to submit um, up to, say, uh, five pieces of work and uh, be included in our virtual presentation, you can email me at lisa silverspring at silverspringtowncenter.com. All of our events are made possible with generous support from Montgomery County United Therapeutics, the Arts and Humanities of Montgomery County, Maryland State Arts, Montgomery College, and many others. And now to get started with the program, um, I'll just pull up our slideshow here so I can share that with you. Um, the Magic of Andean Surrealism with artist Pepe Piedra Incarasta. Um, uh, um, Jose Piedra, also known as Pepe Piedra Incarasta, was born in Cosma, Peru, a town north of Lima, the capital city. This is the same site where the Caral civilization was discovered. Developed around 2600 BC, uh, the Caral are one of the oldest civilizations of the American continent. Archeological evidence shows that they knew no weapons, but they did know art. A 1987 graduate from the National Fine Arts School in Peru, Jose is a professional artist painting with surrealistic style and Andean symbolism using oils, acrylics, and mixed media techniques. Jose Piedra first became known in Peru as a musician once he started playing drums with Tierra Sur, a pioneer reggae band. Since then, he has been playing percussion with several groups, including one of the most popular traditional bands in Peru, Yawar. After Rhythms with Rock and Reggae, it's a fusion of Latin folk rhythms with rock and reggae. In 2015, he founded the Collective Roots. Um, sorry, I just lost my spot there a second. A new band of fusion music, African and Latino roots which is located in Hyattsville, Maryland. <clears throat> As a teacher of painting and art, Jose started summer camps in Trujillo, North Peruvian coast. Then he moved to Lima, the capital, where he continued teaching as well. In 1998, he moved to the US to teach art with, um, 
was uh, WVSA uh, to kids with special needs. I know VSA originally meant very special arts because I worked for their big international festival some years ago too. Um, in 2001, he began teaching at Barbara Chambers Children's Center. Um, and between 2003 and 2010, he taught art at Henson Valley Montessori School in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. He also worked at Sunrise Academy in Washington, D.C., painting murals inside the building, warming the environment for the student students. He currently works and teaches art in his Piedrangular Studio School in Hyattsville. Um, in the Renaissance Square building. Since 2010, he's been teaching art at Create Arts um, Center in Silver Spring. Jose Piedra has been doing murals and exhibitions. There are many exhibitions going on now, as well as teaching throughout the DC area at the present. Um, <clears throat> so he can, he'll tell you more about all of his exhibitions that are, are happening. So let's Let's bring him, bring Pepe on now. So if I can just, I just need to find you here. Okay, welcome Pepe. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to talk with you people, the, you know, all the people that um, follow your um, Silver Spring Town Center. Um, he was, you know, I'm able to answer any question that you want to know. Thanks, thanks for the introduction. That was nice. Okay, okay, great. And so we'll go, we'll go <laughs> on to your first painting, and you can tell us about it. Oh, um, you have the or first painting, like, um, um, yeah. There you go. Dancing with the stars. Uh, it's um. Oh. I did this painting this year um, because uh, do you see the white dog on, in the middle? Yes. It's um it's a dog for a friend who's uh, dancing in the in, in the painting. She lives in um in West Coast in California, so uh, this little dog um, I love him because I use I use him for for another painting. Also, he's uh, my model. So, and this year he got a uh, cancer. Oh. Yeah, that's why, you know, I feel so sad. And she told me about that. And I say, I'm going to make a painting because, you know, it was a sad moment. But uh, right now with all the, um, you know, um, therapies and all of that that uh, he received, he's okay now. He's, um, you know, going out of the cancer. So he's recovering now. He's at home right now. And... Um, I'm 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 glad to to know that because I'm gonna have my model for m more paintings, you know. <laughs> right. Yes, I was hoping you'd tell us about him because I noticed him in other works as well, and I love dogs. So. Yeah, and she's the model. She's um, Teresita Bravo. Uh, she's a friend from uh, the town where I I grew up. You know, when I uh, when I was a kid, I I got that that town where she's from. And it's called the name, uh, the town is called Chota. It's where the, the president who's in jail now <laughs> is from the Chota also, you know? And, uh, but uh, she's always happy. She's always dancing and he's posted, uh, you know, in his um, media, always uh, she's showing the dancing all the time in her house and wherever she's always dancing she's happy um so um, i put all of that together and with many symbolism like um she's uh, with the finger in the right hand she's pointing to four big stars on in the sky i don't know if you see that um that uh, that four stars uh, represents the um, the andean cross Incas used to have that uh, before Incas also the uh, the ancient cultures they always uh, use this uh, cross star because um, represents the four uh, it's like uh, when we're talking about east west north south 
Danings, you know, they they have that as a guide for uh, South America. It's the same in, in North America. We have the the uh, I think it's a polar star, right? So so the 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 in the ships and the ocean in the nighttime they guide by the stars. So in the south in in um, in South America we uh, you know people follow that um, four stars. It's called um, Inca Cross. And also, um, I have the moon always in my paintings. And the things that she has on, on the top, you know, in, in holding in the hands, they are like a seven uh, circles. Uh, for me, that uh, that kind of circles is um, symbolism for the third eye. The third eye is, um, you know, um, a representation that I got from um, the Incas pottery, or oh, before Incas, Chimus, and um, all the ancient cultures, they have uh, um, pottery in, in clothes, you know, the designs on the clothes, they always use that kind of symbol, like a pupil in the eye. It's not the complete eye, but just the pupil. And I use it to paint it in different colors to, you know, to play with the, the colors on the painting. Um, Another symbol is the owl, always in my paintings too. Um, the owl means the mystery, the knowledge that uh, people have to know some something. And also another symbol is um, the, uh, the Inca's door or window. In this case, it's a door, you know, with, um, with double, double size of door. So uh, that represents for me. Uh, I use a lot in my in my paintings also. Uh, that represents um, like a portal to another dimensions. So and, and the father of this girl who's dancing, he just passed away uh, like two months ago, and and the father he always liked the the the, the roosters. You know uh, when they fight the roosters. And she, he loves to 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 do that. So the, I put the rooster going to the tall, going to another dimension. It's a representation of her, her father. And also um, the um, the fire is to give them the um, you know for me the fire is is the the love of um, you know that uh, kind of. Uh, feeling that everybody has inside in the heart and transform everything. That's the love. The fire is love. And also I have um, in the air on the right side, it's a, like, um, like a shell. That's a big shell. People use in the ancient culture and, and also in Incas, they use as a trumpet. They make a little hole in the middle and they use as a trumpet. Always when it's a big moment, like uh, when the you know, when the Inca comes, they first of all they come. You know the guys who make the sound with the with the trumpet. And also, but for me in this time it's um, just floating in the air, and it has a little um, leaf on the top. That's a coca leaf. The coca is uh, the leaf that they use uh, Incas they use it for, for um, connection with the universe. It's, it's not a drug, it's just, um, you know, it's just a plant. It's a holy plant. And also in the bottom, I put some um, mushrooms. Dot mushrooms is to make it more, a little bit more uh, like a plane with the moment, more magically and give me more mystic to the moment. Also in the in the clothes, if you see in the the t-shirt, it's at the sky of the Chota, the, the town where she's you know she's come from in, in Peru. And the in the skirt is just a mountains. We said the little town has a mountains around. Chota has a little uh, a lot of mountains around. It's a little town, but uh, you know all the mountains around. So it's my representation for that, and and the read, you know the reeds on the bottom of this on the skier is the three colors red, yellow, and green. 
that represents my feeling in Rasta, the colors of uh, reggae music and Rastafarians people, who represents, you know, the red, yellow, and green, always um, African colors that comes with the reggae music. And yeah, and so it's a, the representation of um, a special moment and um, it's more, um, you know, to to give some uh, power to my my friend, um, the, my little friend, the white dog, Hashi. I think that his name is Hashi. And um, Teresita loves the dog and it's like uh, her, her son, you know? She had the, the real son and the second son is this little boy always dancing for her always uh, seen with she dance always all the time so that's a uh, you know the idea for this painting i did like um i finished on on july probably this year it's one of the, the last one this one pepe we featured this one in our september newsletter you may have yeah. noticed <laughs> yes yes i love it you know, I yes. love you took this this painting. Okay, the next one. Did you want the next? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh yes, this is a special one. Um, it's called um. Mana from the Andes, or the other name should be La Papa. You know, in Peru, we uh, the La Papa comes from Peru. We in Peru we have like um, more than three thousand types of Papa, in different colors, different sizes, different. You know, the north of the south is uh, different potatoes that we have in Peru, and um, in that time, you know, the Incas um, before Incas, the other civilizations and before Incas. They uh, changed genetically because in the beginning the papa was um, a poison thing, and they change, and the papa becomes you know the the most uh, popular um, food that comes from uh, South America and goes to Europe. When Europeans got the papa, they love it and they make a famous. You know, right now everybody just eat papa and everywhere, and you know the potatoes. The probably the most uh, the most popular food in, in in the whole world, you know, all the countries, especially here in USA, we have a lot of potatoes in every food. So for us, it's um it's like um like a bless or God, you know, from God to to have the things that we um we can feed the whole world. Because that's our mission. Everything that we make in Peru is for the whole world, not just the Peruvian people. That's uh, that's the magic that uh, we have in the Andes. You know, always we think and and in everybody. But um, things are going to change probably right now. My country is in uh, um, problems, but it's gonna it's gonna change. And also in this uh, in this painting, I have the. Um, the um, the cross star that I we we talking about in the first painting, the four stars. So if you see in the in the middle of the painting, it's like a, a square with a cross in the middle, with a circle. That's the representation of the Inca's cross. And um, in the middle, I put it the 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 condor. It's another symbol for uh, for Peru people, for for Andes, and also uh, these two personages, uh, you know, the the boy and the girl with the little baby. They represent like um, uh, they are meditating in the in the noon. When the Angelus, you remember the the painting, the Angelus. It was a representation of, I think it's from, uh, oh, I cannot remember right now, the, the, it's a French painter, but I think it's Millet, the original uh, painting of uh, 
the the French painter. So he make this um, famous painting in the uh, probably in the 14th century or 16th century around that. And so I take that that kind of a composition, but I make a in, in my style. So also I have the the llama, but in this case uh, um, I'm not using the llamas. I use another kind of llamas. It's called alpaca. Has more more hair, and it's like me, you know, too big hair, long hair. I I don't use uh, eyes, and and also um, even though he doesn't has um, eyes, he still has expression. It's looking to the viewer, you know, and also in the and they put some um, colors of uh, little um, wood, wool. In the ears, you see three three colors. So people put that colors for identify who is that, you know. Mines are red. Yours are type of, of what color, you know. And depends on people, they put different colors. So, but. Um, They are like uh, in in position of um, of uh, thank God for all the things that are received from the um, from the air, because in in Andes people, the air is the is the goddess of uh, of the universe. It's not just the air. Like uh, right here, we we just see the air and. Nobody cares, you know, it's just air. But for us, it's, la, it's the mother, you know, it's the big uh, goddess for us. And so we have to, a lot of respect, we need to, um, we need to uh, make, a, you know, thanks to God to receive all the, because even though we, you know, uh, make a, a lot of bad things for the air, still the air, the, the air give us, um, you know, a lot of food, they give us a lot of air, they give us a lot of medicine in, in the plants. And all of that things, we don't, um, you know, we don't give the value, the real value to that. So that's why this painting is more for, you know, reflection and uh, to to think about it. And it's not nothing like uh, just air, it's more, um, Honor to to the our uh, goddess, the like the pa Pachamama. Yeah, Pepe? It's the Pachamama. Yes, okay. it's the Pachamama. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Okay, this one it's a color meditation. I did this in August last last month, and um, this is uh, every time that I make um, self portraits. I do a lot of self portraits. I love to do that because every time I do um, self portrait, it's an opportunity to know myself, you know, better. And for me, it's easy to to paint myself because um, I most most of the time I am in my studio by myself. You know, watching me and in, in the in the mirror or on my paintings, and all the time I'm, you know, I studying my face and I know my face already. I can, I can, you know, I can paint my my portrait without mirror, without nothing, just in my imagination. I know already my face, so <laughs> this is most you know, and that's always I have a, a different symbols. Like if you see, it's a couple of things that people don't see in this painting. It's in the left hand, you know, close to the close to the um, face. He's holding a um, um, palette knife. Do you see the palette knife in the hand? And the palette knife has a reflection on my face also. It's a little tiny uh, self portrait in, into the this self portrait. So it's like a two cell portraits on it, but you can see on just one eye and part of my nose and my head. I don't know if you can see that, but um, the owl again in my paintings, um, 
I try to to use again the the Incas window in the left side where the hour is and I repeat seven times. So that means uh, in, it becomes like a little, um, I don't know if could be a, a cage for, for the bird, kind of cage, but it's not a cage. It's just a window, just repeat it seven times. Because uh, I use the seven, the seven, uh, seven number in my uh, in my paintings. So seven is my number. If I add all my uh, all the um, what's called the numbers of my uh, birth, I can just got um, number seven in the end when add all the numbers of my birth. So. That's why I always repeat the seven in, in my elements. If you see the, again the little uh, circles, I repeat seven times. And um, what another symbol I have here? It's um, the the Incas cross again in my hand, in my right hand. You know, like um, like a bracelet. And I have another symbol there in uh, the hair. Also, it's um, it's a, like a nighttime, you know, just stars in the black hair. And again, you can see the 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 Incas cross into the hair, the four stars, and uh, also the symbol of uh, I have in my in, in my color in my necklace. This symbol is like um, um I, I don't know if you if you already know this it's um disarmer atomic disarmer this is the symbol of peace you know the green one that's uh, that means uh, atomic disarmer but uh, if you cut in the middle you have the D and the A so if you open it like that you have the bolt becomes the circle and the in the white in, you know in the middle so that means you know a lot of in the hippies time comes this symbol because it was the the time of the you know where it was atomic bombs and atomic war and all of the things so people are protesting about that it's just the most um symbols on that in just the the books you know, I prefer the books than the technology right now. <laughs> That's why I put the books in, in, in the bottom, in, in the right side, in the, in the bottom. And um, yeah, and this is most, you know, my, my, uh, my symbols in my, in my painting. And this is just acrylic. I make this with, with acrylics. I cannot hear Lisa. Your your voice is cutting, cutting. Always work in acrylic. Yes. Mainly, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so should we go to the next one? Yeah. Okay. This painting is an oil and acrylic. Remember, uh, remember your arrival. It's about um one uh, of the ancient um, kings that comes to, to Peru. Nobody knows where this come from, but comes on the, on the ocean, comes with a lot of people with him. And um, he creates, um, you know, the big culture in the, in the north part of Peru, um, it's called Lambayeque. So this guy, Comes with a lot of a lot of people, servants, and in in um, women and other people. You know, one a specialist, a couple one couple people are specialists. One was just for to paint the face. The other one was for uh, give the food. The other ones for uh, you know, everyone has a specialty and to attending him. And um, this guy is so important. And he also bring the this 
kind of dog, a Peruvian dog, you know, a hairless Peruvian dog. And he also, uh, I put in this, and um, this is another symbol that I got over there. It's a called um, the jaguar. The jaguar is um, a lot of, um, a lot of um, pre-Inca civilizations. They use the symbology of uh, jaguar. It represents the, um, the air, you know, represents the 3D world where we live already. Because they have a, a three three different uh, worlds: the spiritual world, the material world, and the underground world. So, uh, the jaguar represents the the one of um, in the third world. And um, again, we have the more um, around the head. We have um, seven times again the the third eye. Also, um, if you see under the nose, they have something to cover the mouth. So all the in that time, all the um, the royal people they cannot show their emotions because uh, they say um, we are descending from God. So the normal people, the common people, cannot see the expression of the Inca. So uh, all the royal people have to cover the mouth. So they just uh, the people cannot see if they if the Inca was uh, laughing or, or or mad or whatever. You know they cannot see the, the emotion. Just they see the eye. Even though the people cannot cannot see directly to them, nobody can see them. So. In the bottom, when he's sitting, oh no, before and uh, in the chest, you see again the, um, the Inca's cross. You see in, in the chest, it's again the Inca's cross representation. And in the top also, in the top of the painting, we have the, um, the flag of um, Andean people. It's with all the colors, include the white and um, the, the sky blue, the light blue. That that means uh, you know that that's the difference with um, with the other flag of L L G T V something like that. You know they have almost the same uh, uh, flag. But in this case, in the Andes, we uh, add the white and the um, sky blue to make the difference. And uh, also in the bottom, when he's sitting, do you see a little bit like a beans, black and white? I uh, think in English is called uh, lima beans. So uh, we have a, a special ones in, in Peru with uh, black and white. So uh, people use as um, to see the, the the light. So they throw it on the table, and they can see the future, and and all of that comes, you know, just seeing how the 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 lima beans comes in the floor. So it's a little uh, all of these things, you know, some little magic things that they people in the Andes use. And this guy, uh, when when uh, he got old. The legend said um, they got some, they grow some wings and just go away, and um, that's why they call the, uh, the god um, you know with wings. And also, and he's coming in the in the um, little boat. I don't know if you see completely. You cannot see completely, but it, it, he's in the, in the boat. In that time, they make it with with. Um, with another materials, they don't use uh, wood. They use um, uh, like uh, straws, real, you know, kind of straw, re really, really strong ones. They use until now in, in um, for example, in Puno, in the Lago Titicaca, they have a couple um, islands where the people uh, live over there, and they 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 make the houses with those kind of straw. So. And also in the uh, holding from that, 
we you can see some um, red uh, shells. Those are spongulous. This is so um, really popular for the Inca sign and, and also for the pre Incas. And they use, uh, when, when the Inca comes on, um, on the air, before the Inca pass, they have a, somebody a specialist and, and make a, the, this kind of um, shells. They um, ground it and make a, like a like a little um, what's called uh, like a flower, right? So, but it was red. So they put it in the floor like uh, you know the Inca pass on on top of that. Like uh, right now, people make it with with. Um, with petals, you know, or flowers. Sometimes they make a like a, in the floor, they put so when somebody comes, you know, in that time it was a, that kind of style. And yeah, this is the, the painting about that. The the name of the guy is Nile Lamp. It was on one of the, the kings, one of the before Inca's time, you know, it's like a, probably 3,000 years old ago to 2000 years before Incas. And this is the idea for this kind of painting. And I make it with oil. All the body um, is with oil and the rest around is acrylic. Great. So would you like me to go to the next? Yeah. Okay. A spiritual transmutation. Um, you know, the transmutation is to to make the bad things uh, become to change it and become some good things. So when I was a kid, I used to be a really bad. Oh, all the kids, you know, I'm not right now, but in, in that time when I was a kid, long time ago, it was... Uh, you know, we, we play with the animals, we don't respect, uh, like uh, right now we have, you, we can hear like, uh, you know, people, friends of the animals, they defend it, they, the animals has already rights and all of that. In my time, it wasn't, you know, the, the, the dogs were, especially in Peru, nobody can, you, like uh, you see right now, everybody's with the dog, with the leash and all of that walking with the dog. No, in, in Peru, the dogs are free. You know, they are in the street, they play with everybody and it's like that. I don't know if right now it's like that, but uh, because I'm already out of my country more than 10 years. And, but in that time when I was young, you know, all the dogs are out. And we are bad with the dogs, we are bad with the cats, we are bad with the birds. You know, we catching the birds, killing the birds, and all of that with the kids. You know, kids will do that. We don't. We are not conscious about that. So that's what right now, uh, thinking about the things, bad things that I did when I was a kid. I'm trying to make a painting to to change that idea. So I put the cat, I put the birds. I put the dog, you see this, this, this is the same dog that I used in the first painting. The Hachi, you know, this little white dog. In the first painting, that was, uh, you know, when he, when um, the girl was dancing with the stars. And right now he's just sitting in this black girl. It's a um, representation of, uh, we have um, a lot of big, uh, black community in Peru, Afro-Peruvians, and they have the dance, they have a uh, music, black music, uh, Afro-Peruvian music, and all of that uh, is an influence for me too, because um, the black uh, music introduced me to the reggae music. That's how I came, you know, because I'm a musician too, if uh, people don't know, I used to be a musician and, and, and painter. Right now, I'm just painter because uh, I'm too old for the <laughs> to keep playing drums. Uh, I, I used to play drums, but um, in 
I start with um, rock music and then I pass to the um, folk music and this and this folk mix, folk music and um, and then I start with the reggae. So the three time three three different kinds of, of music I I try to play with all of them. So this is basically my my. Um, influence in this in this painting. I don't I cannot see them. Let me see. Um oh okay. What all elements? So I have you know the, the instruments, the black music instruments, the conga and the cajon is an instrument, the percussionist, so it's a it's a case when you sit and play with the hands. And also we have uh, the donkey jaw. If you see the jaw over there it's another kind of instrument, and also the cowbell and the little box and, and the left side. So uh, all of these instruments for Black uh, Afro-Peruvian music. Again, we see the the, um, the red shells. You know, that represents the the female energy of the air. And this painting is it made it with oil. Mm -hmm. the, the The lady was with oil. She was posing uh, for, at the beginning was um uh, uh, the model pose uh, naked, but uh, I'm trying to just put up some clothes and make a for for this painting, especially for this painting, try to don't present a like a naked woman uh, doesn't matter. So I, I'm trying to put just some clothes on top, and the hat. You can see uh, on the top is like a spiral, you know, represents the energy. And always I put seven um, hummingbirds. You can see I'm repeating the seven again. Every time that I have the chance, I just repeat seven times any element that I'm using. And, what and, significance do hummingbirds have in Andean culture, Pepe? The, the hummingbird is um, good luck. And they say when when some hummingbird comes close to you is because somebody who is in the other dimension, probably people who die already, they send you a message. They send you saying hello or send you good luck for everything that you are working on it. Okay, great. Yep, and always the bull, I mean the owl, mm -hmm. and the wind with the moon. That's my uh, elements that I play always in, in my uh, in my paintings. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. I love owls and moons also. <laughs> yes. And I've seen many. I didn't know about the donkey jaw being used as an instrument. Oh, I know it's the an instrument. Yes, yeah, an instrument. You know, when you when you hit it, you hold it from the tip and, and um, from right here. You hold it from right here, and just with the right hand, you just kick it, because when it's dry, all the the the, the teeth are uh, you know are no um, stuck. They are fluffy. So when you hit it, it starts oh. to sound like a. <sighs> And that yeah. instrument comes, you know, special for, for the uh, Afro-Peruvian music. Wow, interesting. Yes. Great. Well, uh, I don't know if you can see there are some comments in the chat uh, along the way. F folks, you're welcome to put your comments in the chat. We're almost at the end of the photos. We can um, have a little time. I'll go on to the next then, Pepe. Uh, Should we go to the next one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't see the chats. I don't know. Okay. I think it only comes, like, if you put your cursor up at the top, it'll show, and then you can click on chat. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can see some people doing here. Oh, yes. That's a lot of people coming, huh? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Okay, now we have Ilandera. What does okay. Ilandera mean? Okay, Ilandera means um the spinner. 
you know the spinner the little things that you make in one hand and just you know spinning with the wool so when you make the the clothes so the spinner um it represents the for me i'm trying to to make a last year for um, for halloween time you know everybody represents the witches but always people represent the witch like um ugly women in representation of bad people or bad women, you know? But for me, it's the opposite. For me, the witches are the beautiful people. They are the, the smarter people in that time, you know, in the 14th century or 15, when they started, in, when the religion started to, to, you know, catch them, you know, they and, and burn them. So, because they trying to impose the the um, what's it called um the paternalism you know the the patriarchal patriarchy yeah so um in that time the religion start to impose that and, and start to say you know women are not good women are not smart women are they put all of that women under you know and they put the men on the top so the the papa is men, the the priests are men, the no women are now participating, just saying yes, 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 amen. But they don't leave the, the women participate. That until now, you know, people are uh, changing their conscience. And that's what I try to paint, and you know, like um women, beautiful women. I make this with oil, just with the body is with oil, and the rest is acrylic around. So I'm trying to represent this kind of hat is um, uh, and these people use until now in Cusco. There's a Cusco uh, with Machu Picchu is as a big town in, in Peru. They try to use that kind of um, that kind of hat, and always you know the spiritual um, the spiritual savers or or uh, what do you call uh, the guardians the spiritual guardians all of these animals around they are the spiritual guardians if you see in the bottom it's uh, under the the uh, the legs of the women close to the dog the peruvian dog hairless it's a cuy we call a cuy to the um, guinea pig it's a uh, really famous for me, and, and you know, in the little town where I grew up, we eat a lot of um, guinea pigs, and it's a it's a, one of the best uh, food because it not has any fat in the body. It, it, you know, all the what, food has a lot, of, a lot of proteins. What does it taste like? Is it like rabbit or chicken? Yes, tastes like a rabbit, and um, you know, it's a uh, really tasty, but uh, really small pieces, you know. That's mm -hmm. why when you when you ask for for kui, they give you one the whole things on the plate with potatoes and rice and all of that. Right. Are they still in the wild? I heard that they're no longer that they're only domesticated now. I was reading about that the other day. Yes. Yeah. They're not. They're not wild right now. Everybody's just growing, and they're so popular right now. And always, if you see, um, and this uh, kind of energy comes uh, from the right top, coming like a spiral going into the into the window where the moon is. It's an energy coming in, and also we have the seven again, the seven um, little circles representing the third eye. End of the. Um, the broom that you see in the painting is a representation for the, the witches, but it's a it's a big story about, about the broom. Why uh, people uh, you know put together always the witches with the broom? Nobody knows, but it was um, um, discovered in the in the 15th century. The women discovered because women in that time when people uh, when the men uh, you know are busy with uh, conducting the society and rule everything, the women start to to check uh, the, the connection with the nature. 
So women uh, are smart and they know everything about women because in that time, nobody cares about a women's problem, especially when they have a menstruation, the, the pain and the menstruation and all of the things. Doctors don't, don't attend to that. They don't care because it's for women. But, and, and, and so when, when they discover a little plant, I don't remember right now the name, but they discover some magic plant. It's not magic, it's medicinal plant that um, when they, um, they put on, on the, under the, um, in the private parts, they put uh, that kind of, um, they make a, 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 like a paste with that plant and they uh, just rub it in the, in the private parts on, or on the belly button. So the, they realize that that kind of plant, you know, put away all the pain for the women, all the bad feeling when, you know, some uh, mother women has a, a pain in the, in the, in the belly or, or, uh, or headaches or whatever. And they put it always right here and uh, also in behind the ears in the in the uh, you know in, in different parts of the of the body and so when they um they start to say oh this is make us make us uh, feeling good and they start to forget the, the pain and they start to dance they start to when when the other people ask them what are they feeling to be like that they say we feeling like uh, we are in the air you know we are flying because that's that's uh, you know the 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 plant make that it was a hallucination so it was like a psychotropic uh, plant so for the men to to make in the bad way they say no women fly in in the, in the broom because when when men discover that things happen they they try to um, you know, make up, stop women doing that. So what the women do is, and, um, in, in, you know, in, in secret, they uh, make um, meetings in secret and they start to celebrate that. And they use that kind of plant for them. And the way to use was um, uh, in a stick, you know, big sticks they use for the meetings. And they rub it, the, the stick with, with that kind of plant. And when they, uh, uh, it's like, um, you know, going on top of the, uh, of the stick, that stick touched the, the private parts and they dancing around. But other people, uh, they don't know, they think they real fly in the air with that. That's how, you know, becomes the, the idea that which is just flying on top of the, on the broom. But it wasn't like that. And also in this painting, if you see on the back of the um, of the lady, in the back we have a little like a circle. In the pottery, in 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 the in our cultures, you know, and pre Incas and Incas, they in the pottery we use like a round on top of the the pottery. And I put the things. Um, in representation of uh, all the power that uh, that they have to manage, make a, a feeling bad in the in the back. So what the pain in the in the in the spine is the representation of this, just a little um, holding in, in the back, and also again in the face you can see the mouth covered it to people cannot see the emotions. And yeah, that's uh, most of the, the, the things that I use in this painting. And um, so it's asking about the meaning of the uh, peacock, the um, pavo real. Oh, the peacock is, um, yes. Yeah, She's trying to look in, uh, to her, trying to, to catch him, you know, on, from the bottom to the top. But 
even though they it's, it's like a people trying to to see the the god but you cannot see it but you believe it on it mm -hmm. that's what she's uh, you know the peacock is looking from the bottom to the top and uh, the owl again you know is i'm trying to to play with the spaces that i have in between the arm and the body is it was like um you know the age of the of the body form the age of the owl. So that for me is um, the simultaneous border. Like uh, I've used the, the same border for the owl is the same border for the body. So I'm trying to to catch all of that. And if I'm not mistaken, Pepe, I've yes. seen I've seen dozens of your paintings with many of them have owls. But I think this is the only one where the owl is seated in the lap of a person or touching the person. Yes. Mm -hmm. so always the owl was, you know, in all the paintings are, you know, apart, just mm -hmm. above. But in this time is really close. It's the same like a little dog in behind, behind, behind the lady, you know, it's like a, trying to, to be, you know, like, a, I don't know what it's called in English, um, spoiling like a really close you know trying to be mm -hmm. this is my mama pedaling with them yeah okay yes. right great so interesting and then dream catchers we know in native american um oh tradition you have them there in the andes as well dream catchers no, I'm, I'm trying to to mix it because um this um Urobo is this, uh, it's called this, um, you know, when the, this symbol, when, when the, the snake eat the, the, um, the tail. That means, you know, the energy goes around and don't, don't uh, finish. Mm. The, the energy never finish, you know, always transform, but never finish. I'm trying to, when I make that, I don't know how to use it. So I'm trying to hold it in between I make, a, and it becomes a, a dream catcher. In the middle, I just put the Incas cross. I'm trying to mix all of that. I'm trying to play with that symbol. Right. right. This, the little um, pottery on the top, not on the top, and, and you know, um, in front of the little dog. Mm -hmm. That pottery, uh, nobody knows where it's come from. Uh, it's, they found it in the Andes, but it has like, a, they make a, the carbon um, measure it. And they find that it's like um, 1500 years ago. And nobody knows what culture uh -huh. was in that time because everything we know is most uh, until 3000 probably no more no more back so but this uh, when they find this nobody knows and they trying to to find you know more more information about that but nobody knows mm -hmm. so the carbon dating dates it to 1500 bc yes. or 1500 years ago no 15000 years 15000 years ago oh yes. Yeah, okay. That's why you know it's a really weird because nobody knows. Wow. Nobody wow. knows what kind of culture was in that time. Oh wow, interesting. Wow. Yeah. And also are you always use the, the Inca's window, you see, with the moon mm -hmm. holding uh, like a, like a, trying to catch the moment. That's what I'm I'm trying to hold it always the, the Inca's window. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go to the next one. Yeah. Oh, mind control. This mind control, um, talking about the power of uh, women and empowered with the moon, the cycle of life, and women always need to be uh, um, in control of her mind to don't catch, to don't uh, follow in the, in the men's mentality, you know? <laughs> so trying to, to get the women always uh, taking it serious. That's what I'm, I'm trying to use the Incas windows as, um, as a, uh, 
Okay, yeah, the Incas windows um, is against the representation of uh, portals to another dimension. And in into the Incas window, we have the moon as a, it represents the, the cycle of life all the time. You know, women has a 28 uh, days to uh, uh, every cycle, same as a moon and always, uh, you know, around the, the air. And always uh, again in in the in the neck, we have more uh, Incas window. And trying to represent this uh, with um, wrapping the hair with the colors of um, um, Jamaican colors or African colors, because. This uh, in the face, I'm trying to decorate with uh, colors as um, um, African people who decorate their faces with these colors. And again, in the top and the, and the front, we have the Incas window with a little dog, the pigeon there, uh, you know, in the in the window, and try to to represent the the power of women, you know, the the control that they should have with with the war, where everything happens around. And um, the colors are brightening, you know, all, everything is work with acrylics. And um, this is like a 20 by 16. And this painting is gonna be in, in next show that I have in, in Manassas in November. Uh, right now I have four four um four shows running and uh, three already running and the fourth one is gonna be in November. Another okay. one in October too also we have five five um shows. Where so are shows Pepe. Yes. Will will you tell us where they are or is there a place where we can see them listed? Oh um one of the shows is in, in Anacostia Art Center in Anacostia, DC. And the other show is in Gettysburg, in Herbert Park. And also in, I have another show in Children's Hospital. The opening is gonna be in as October 14th. And the other show is going to be in Manassas in the gallery um, Art Factory in, in mm -hmm. Manassas. There's going to be a big show too, you know, it's for, for Latino people. And the opening is going to be on November 3rd. And most of the paintings that we see in here it's are in, in my in my shows already. Okay, great. Well, I'll try to make it to some some one of them anyway. Um. So the you said this this shape of the earring that's called an Inca window. Yes, some Incas windows or 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 ink or doors. Could be in windows or doors, they use the same uh, shape. And that's the the, um, the door for for uh, another dimensions, you know, the, the portal. Is it was, was it used like in uh, some of the ruins and the pyramids? What do you say? Where uh, can you find this design of an Inca window or an Incan door in the pyramids? Or the ruins, like at Machu Picchu. Oh yes, yes, we we have a okay. lot, a lot of that. Okay. And all all the you know, even though the Incas or pre Incas, they have the same the same thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, Elizabeth is asking which of the paintings you've shown today mean the most to you personally. The moon is the connection with uh, with with the women. You know, it's the connection with the change, uh, connection with um, um, the cycle of life. Like uh, women has uh, 28 days, the same as a moon. 
and women are really connected with the moon, men, we, we don't care too much about that. But women know that. They know every month, you know, comes the good days and, and the bad days, right? <laughs> so you have to know. That's why this painting is, you know, you have to be in control of that. If you don't have control of that, you lose it and, and start, you know, being in conflict with different things. So when when women are more conscious about that, everything is, becomes, you know, good in in, uh, in control. Mm -hmm. Great. Should, should I go to the next? I think we're almost at the end. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is Paco Pampa's dream. Paco Pampa is a place in um, the little town where I grow, um, Chota, in the north of Peru, in north the Andes. And they discover a uh, really short time ago. Uh, so um, they discover a new new place with uh, uh, Japanese anthropologists. They uh, start to, you know, um, open this um, mommy that they find it over there. It's a big, they, they didn't finish to discover. It's a big thing that is going to be like a, probably like a Machu Picchu, before, you know, later. Um, it's a really important thing. And they, they found that this is the first, um, the first women that, you know, uh, as, a, as a queen in that time. That's before Incas, like a, a 2,000 years before Incas or 3,000 years before Incas. So it's really ancient. So again, you see the the um, the kuis around seven kuis, and this one has seven kuis, seven mushrooms, and seven um, lima beans around. And what else? I have again the the hummingbird talking to her, and she's covering the mouth so nobody can see if she's happy or angry or whatever. And also seven, um, you see in, in, in the middle of the body, it's like a, uh, the chakras, you know, seven chakras or seven um, little pupils that represents the third eye. It started in the, in, the, in the top going down. And I use the, the blue color in the skin because it's more representation of um, the holy things, like um, you you see the the Indian culture, you know, in India they use uh, for for representation of Buddha or all the you know sacred people in blue skin. Oh. I don't know if if you if you guys see that in in the Indians uh, Indians culture, they have all of that blue people in the stamps on, on the representation. In some blue people, in another normal people. The blue people means, you know, the people comes from the spirituality things. Hmm. And, and this lady is holding one of the, the quiz in the hand, um, is the black one. And the shamans in, in, um, in the Andes, they cure passing the, the kui around the body. When you're feeling bad, they just get the kui and pass all of that around. If it's black kui, it's better. And take all of the bad vibrations in your body and take off and you're feeling well. But it depends on the shaman also, right? And also the jaguar and the snake, you know, come together. And because this lady, they think uh, she was like, um, uh, most that uh, most of the time she was um, the power of cure people is like a medicine girl. So that's why when when the jaguar and the serpent and the um, and the serpent comes together. That's the 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 Paco Pamp's lady. 
in our game, we have the, the owl, the moon, my symbols. In the back, we have the cactus, the San Pedro. It's a kind of um, cactus they use. They, they cook it and they drink that, that caution to, that's, that's an, another drug. This is a hallucination, you know? It's like a ayahuasca I or understand. San Pedro. They drink that and they start to see things that's not real, you know? Wow. And, yes. And um, also in the hours, <clears throat> excuse me, it's on top of the, the white, you know, like a, a cane, but it's in, in the shape of white. That representation of women, the, the women power. You see when when um if you check the um, the David Star, you know, I don't know if you can see right here. You see the David Star? It's a triangle going up and triangle a triangle going down. Star of David. Uh -huh. Yeah, David Star. So when um mm -hmm. the triangle going down is the feminine and the triangle going up is uh, the masculine. So in this case and and uh, in this painting, I use the the tri triangle going down. You know, like uh, like a white is the representation of women power. So, so Elizabeth is asking if you have seven cooies represented here. I'm not sure what's in the the god. The is this a god? You said a goddess. You mean the, the, the her cooies? Hand? The cooie, How many cooies do we have here in this? Oh, painting? seven. It's seven. If you count it, so three on top of the of the snake, and one of the shoulder. Two behind the the right hand, the right arm, and one in the hand, the black one in the hand. Oh, okay, so that's a black one. The, yes. But it, the one in the hand looks so different; it it doesn't look alive like the others. <laughs> yes. To me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit difficult to to get into the black. You know, make a, the same things like the other ones. The other oh, ones okay. Easy. The other ones are easy because the colors help to to representation, you know. But in the black, it's really hard. But mm -hmm. I'm trying. Right. Okay. Right. Well, I, interesting. I think is this the last one? Because we we can we have a little time for discussion. If let's see. Oh no, we have this one oh, here. Oh, this time. Okay. Um, loneliness. This is um. I work in in uh, acrylic. And this is representation of the, um, the separation of the kids with the parents and the, and the border. You remember um, all of this uh, last time, you know, like uh, two, three years ago and started, they separate the immigrants, kids, you know, some ones come uh, alone, some another comes with the parents, but they, in the border, they separate. And the kids start to be alone in jail is like a, you know they make a, a that's why you see in one side of the on the jar the the big jar represents the spirituality that we need to feel it this big base in in the left side you can see like a wire like, like a wire fence yeah, that's, that's the representation of the jail for the kids. Do you know if you see, uh, I don't know, if you pay attention when they make the, the, the news in the, in, you know, in the TV or whatever in the news, we always see the kids, you know, sleeping with, uh, with uh, aluminum covers in, in, um, into the, these uh, fences, you know. In, in the right side, you can see again the Incas window. I'm trying to watch uh, through that. I'm sad already. And under the face on the Incas window, you can see the border. That's the the, um, the wall that they make it on the, on the border with Mexico. You know, the big wall uh, that... Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. That the ex ex president say you know Mexicans gonna pay for that <laughs> <laughs> nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, the world. So that's the representation, the representation of the world. And then, and this little kid is, it was so sad, and she and he he wrote in the um, in the wall, you know, mommy, papi, where you are, just asking for them. And mm -hmm. of course, he make a pee in the in the pants, and he's mm -hmm. really sad and scared most of the. And you can see um, on the right side. It's uh, like a dragon coming into the to the floor underground, and this is oh. the representation of ice. The you know, ice. People, yeah, people, ice people who catch the the immigrants. Oh. And what are the bubbles representing? Which one? The there's like three bubbles. Oh, the bubbles is you know just uh, the fragility of this moment. You know the people we are so fragile. Uh, representation of uh, you know especially kids, they are you know so fragile, and uh, could be any time, could be pop. And under the the big jar, you can see some um, nuts. That's the the um, the representation of. Uh, Incas used to have a um, kind of uh, language. They didn't find, a, you know, people didn't never find the writing uh, of the Incas, but we know that we we use that kind of uh, nuts, you know, in the different, uh, you know, they make with, uh, with um, what do you call, um, when they call, uh, están colgando unas, unas, um, Word. Yeah. Rope. Yeah, the cords, mm -hmm. the rope. Mm -hmm. Rope with nuts. Every nut uh, means something, or the color of the mm -hmm. of the core means something, and that's the language that you use in, in that time. But not, already, is, uh, you know, they are still uh, studying that because nobody knows uh, the, the the meaning of that. Mm -hmm. And also, we have the in, in the bottom, we have. Um, the monarch butterflies, that's the representation of um, uh, migration. Mm -hmm. And also on the top, um, you know, around, we see always uh, the seven um, pupils. Again, seven, the third eye, seven times. And seven butterflies, seven... Uh, uh, chords. I play always with seven. The the butterflies know no borders. Sin fronteras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without borders. Yeah, they are seven, seven all the time. Mm hmm. And this is the the um, you know uh, I, I I was uh, really um, feeling feeling really bad when I see the, this news where they separate the kids. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really sad moment. It was terrible. Mm. I hope they don't they don't keep doing that because nobody knows what happened with the kids. Nobody talking about about that, you know? Nobody talking about that. Politicians don't talking about that. What happened with the kids right now? Yeah. Nobody Thousands. knows. Aren't there like 4,000 missing? Yeah. They are Something missing a lot incredible. and nobody knows, you know, it's a lot of bad people get, getting them to, to holding them, but that's Right. Not Sorry, I didn't mean to stop the screen. Um, what, was that the last one? We can, um, we can open it up for some questions and comments if people would like. Yeah, they can. They can ask him. Um, Anyone have a comment or question for Pepe? I know we were supposed to end at nine, so maybe some people had to step away. But um, yeah, so I just uh, really enjoy the uh, imagery. Um, even in darkness, you know, she's there's exuberance in in many of your works. I see, um, Carlos. Yeah. Hi, did you have a comment? Uh, I, I say, Pepe? Yes, I do. I mean, I'm blown away listening to Pepe through I, I put it in the comments, but I'll say it anyway. The presentation was excellent. I mean, the depth 
of uh, explanation and the depth of his uh, tying culture to his paintings and to his thinking, I'm blown away. This, this was so beautiful. I'm so glad I signed on tonight, Pepe. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Carlos. And now I, uh, we have a question from um, from Sharon Lee Minor, another artist. Oh my goodness. Um, Auntie Af her nickname is Auntie Africa. Yes, can you hear me? Because I am, I'm, I'm like Carlos. I'm just totally blown away. I have a copious amount of notes that I've been taking because your symbolism, your visual, vocabulary, the way that you have expressed yourself and the storytelling, the storytelling, which is what is so beautiful. I mean, and and then your craftsmanship and Pedro, mucho gusto. I mean, I'm so <laughs> pleased to have Thank you, you, thank you. Tonight because your work is inspiring. And I thank you. I thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Sharon. Nice to always nice to see you. Yes. Okay. I th does anyone else have another comment or question? Barbara yes. says beautiful I don't know presentation. How to raise my hand. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm Nancy Sims. Uh, I was a neighbor okay. of, of, of of um down the street, Lando, uh, um, in in Hydesville. We did a a program to, well, a painting together. Um, uh, Pepe, I don't know if you remember me, but I was on uh, Longfellow Street, right down the street from the church that was there. Would you like to come onto the screen with your video? Oh, let's yeah, see. Yeah, I need to see the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I don't, I'm not. Here we go. Oh, keep oh, it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, and I, I can can't see you. myself, though. Spotlight. Oh, there I go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nancy, how are you? I am so very well. You are such a master, and I do mean master in our times of, of your art. And Thank you're you. so, um, be, be, because spiritually, I, I can understand a whole lot of what you're saying and the symbolisms. Um, it's just so important to... Um, get artists like you especially to bring out the wisdom and knowledge that has been lost in humanity and that is scattered around in the different spots on the globe on mother earth giving her thanks and praises that um it's it, it is so delightful I'm, I'm as you can see i'm I, it's just hard for me to explain this was absolutely awesome it was a history class from not to three d's but from uh, the uh, but from the 5d also from from another dimension within your window you shared with us some very precious precious uh, uh wisdom that a lot of us have a little piece of but that has been lost during the times of humanity on earth and if if many more people can hear that and many more uh especially artists of various cultures can come together and share their uh ex uh um culture we would very well see how similar and how together and how oneness we we we, we really are and it's just beautiful and i just want to thank the host thank you so much my daughter sent this link to me and uh, I was I didn't even know and she sent it and she recognized you and um, I'm just so pleased and uh, that you're doing the work that you're doing you're doing a service to mankind thank you thank you Nancy um, yeah. we we make it with Nancy we make a collaboration a couple of years ago before pandemia we did a really really nice painting I don't know if you have on in, in you can already to to see the painting. I don't know, but uh, it's 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 upstairs. Um, I don't know if we have time for me to go get it and show okay. it to you. You you can, you can. We we have a few more minutes because Peb is <laughs> going to answer a question or two more. If you want to, okay. okay. I'm We'd gonna, love to see it. I'm going to turn my camera off, and when okay. I turn it back on, I'll have it. Great. Okay. Thank you. 
Great. That was, that was a nice painting that we did both. And um, we have a show already in, in Mont Rainier. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a nice collaboration. We, she's a good, Nancy is a good painter. She's a, she she make a really nice work and we try to make you know uh, something that come from from both and that was that was a good experience very nice right well while we're waiting for nancy there was a question from elizabeth elizabeth would you like to ask your question she wrote it in the chat there elizabeth are you with us Okay, um, she she is asking, uh, do you describe your paintings as surreal or magical realism or something else entirely? Um, what's her name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, which mm -hmm. of the things you have shown today means to most to you personally? Yeah, um, you know, my, my paintings is almost like a, like a filter of, of what happened around me. And I'm trying to get the good things and just put it together in my mm -hmm. paintings. And uh, it, if yeah. when, when it's bad things happen to me, I'm trying to paint it also. And, but, uh, doing the you know the transformation the transmutation to to be a good things instead of you know be a good or bad things um she had another question elizabeth had another question and she asks do you describe your paintings as surrealism or magical realism or something different oh i you know what it's, it's right now it's too hard to put on in one thing uh, i'm trying to mix you know a couple of things is magical realism uh, figurative and also um and surrealism and just many things in one you know uh, right now we cannot make a one like a, you are surrealist you are cubist you are you know it's not right now it's a fusion everything is together so i don't know okay great and i saw nancy come back i think if she wants to or we have we can go to ray next ray has a question or nancy are you ready for yours oh there's the painting She's okay let me spotlight she's spotlighted i think right you can see her painting let me stop the share so we can have it bigger and I'll remove the spotlight on Pepe for a open. moment so we can see it as big as possible. Open your mic, Nancy. Uh, That's the painting, you see? I'm yes. We use my uh, Incas window and I make the, the ladder, the, the tree into the, everything into the Incas window is mine. And she makes the flower, the roses, and I make the, oh, the right. hummingbird. We try to mix all of the things together, you know. <clears throat> Nancy's video, I mean, her voice, her um, something is, she's, she, oh, here, she's muted. Mute, you're muted, Nancy. I don't know if you're talking right now, but we'd like to hear you if you are. Open your mic. Nancy, open your mic. Here she I'm is. sorry. I'm okay. trying to get slow on it. We actually in this window, Peppy, I oh, okay. I felt this in my heart and I knew what it was. I don't know the knowledge, but I knew that it was the window. If you remember, I had a moon there. I had stars there and a moon and he he went back and he um he well he put the moon. I, I'll say that. He'll put the moon and we did some work together in that. But uh, for my terminology, it represented the source, the all, and it also represented the feminine power. Uh, so we have a lot on that. The roses, the roses were the opening of the heart, you know, the various chakras. But as we open our hearts to each other, to humanity and to the wholeness and the oneness, 
of the whole creative uh, uh, universe and more. That's the roses. All of this is showing that we're all one. It is all one. And, and Peppy put that tree of life there with the heart. Peppy, I don't remember the, the, the uh, I, I wasn't sure if the ladder was you or me. I don't remember. Yeah, I did the ladder because it's another symbol of my, um, in my paintings. For right. me, it's, uh, you know, seven, seven steps. And, um, right. And I always uh, represents for me the ladder represents you know going up going up to to the perfection, <clears throat> pardon. Yes. To, to the perfection. So. And for me, that represented uh, um, uh, humanity as a whole, uh, be becoming one, be uh, elevating themselves into the other dimension, and that's why that purple there, that lavender, is because that's the 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 highest of colors spiritual colors and vibrations that we see with our physical eye and yes. um and i'll just go down and then i'm gonna i don't want to take up the whole i'll just go all the way down to the bottom of it so you can see it and that's it i don't want to take over <laughs> but you notice <laughs> he put his birds there so now i know what the birds mean <laughs> oh that means a good luck Yes, I yep. love it. And right. I always put the moon and the sun because that's like male, female, and also the sun is like the the uh the sum of it all. It's the power that we have. So that's it. I'm I don't want to take over, but that's it. And thank you so very much. <laughs> thank you so thank much, you. Nancy. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And um, we have Ray Fudge has got a question for you. Hi, Ray. Uh, hello. hello, everyone. Uh, good meeting, Pepe, yesterday at the festival. Hi, and Danny. I was just so overwhelmed by your body of work that you showed us tonight. And I was wondering if any artists in particular influenced your work as far as your use of the uh, Native American, South American motifs and so forth within your paintings. And you talking about a, a specific? Yeah, thing? yeah. Is, oh. is any art, any particular artist that inspired you? Oh, I have, your, a, I have a development as an artist who is inspires inspirational oh, to you. Oh, I have a many many inspirations. You know, and the classical ones uh, could be. Um, I don't know. It's um, I cannot tell you any name because no one is better than others so for me all of them are the same you know give me give me a lot of things and and right. yeah i cannot see just the lee or, or, or rembrandt or you know any kind of artist the big ones they are inspiring for me and also i always checking the new generations new paintings you know new artists that how they play with the art and here in, in Europe, in, in Asia, in Russia, in all of that kind of uh, artists, they are amazing. I see, you know, um, right. artists from China, from Japan, from Russia, they are so good. Yes. Yeah, I was think thinking of uh, that the painting that you had, the Lamentation, which was, I believe, it's inspired by Millet, French painter. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, the use of the female to earth motif, which kind of reminds me of some of the work of Frida Kahlo. Which in one? In many ways. The uh, use of the female motif within your paintings and the linking it to the earth. And I'm kind of reminded of some of the work of Frida Kahlo when I see that. I mean, it was just so inspirational to see that. Yeah, yeah. Frida Kahlo is a really good artist, and uh, I'm working right now in one of the, the paintings with Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera, but I'm trying to you to do it in my way. So it's it's gonna come in. You know, I don't know if this year, but uh, probably in January, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish that. Well, but thank you very my, much. My work, yeah, because my work is uh, you know I'm working slowly. And because I have uh, many details and I have to work uh, a lot on, on each one. So that's why I'm working, uh, you know, in really slow time. But uh, um, the, the way to uh, avoid that, I, I find uh, to work in like uh, seven paintings at the time. 
at the same time, you know, because it's seven of my numbers. So I, I work with seven colors, seven symbols, all over. But um, uh, I'm trying to put seven paintings. And when I working in one and I stuck because I'm sometimes you you are stuck, you don't know what to do, what color to put or whatever, you know. You are stuck and I go to another painting. And if I don't good on that, go another painting. So I work in the same time in the same paintings with this, uh, before the color, you know, get dry in my palette. So uh, at the end of the month, I have a two, three paintings you know, already almost almost done. So that's the, I find the way to, to work, you know, and, and before I used to work in one painting, just one painting. And I was stuck like two, three months in one, and be, that becomes like a, I want it. So I'm trying to keep it up to finish, but I never do too much. So right now I'm trying to get a lot of paintings at the same time, and it's going to come, you know, any time it's going to come because the fresh eyes is good to, to when you change the, the, the meaning, when you change the painting. Uh, you know, you become with a fresh eye for that painting and, and then, you know, new ideas coming and new things, you know, happen again in the painting. Sometimes the painting uh, asks you for something, you know, and you have to put it on the painting. Other times you bring to the painting and other times, you know, just uh, by uh, accident comes couple things in the, in, the, in the painting that you may you think you make a mistake but it's not a mistake it's a you know it's a good thing that happen for you and if you fix it you're gonna find another things new things in your painting it's some you know accidents happy accidents you know some some people say well thank you very much oh no problem the accident and i put in the comments um Someone who came late was asking what the number seven meant, and I explained it's your your life path number, adding your day, date, and year of birth, and then reducing it. So if you end up with like number twenty six, then your life path is added to two and six are added together to make eight. My, I'm a six, which is kind of like a, a mother nature kind of. Uh, caregiver type, I think, if I recall. <laughs> <laughs> I know seven is the um, is sort of the hermit and person who studies a lot and is spiritual. Oh yeah, that's a special number. You know the the number of creation. That's why they some people call the the God number. Right. Yeah, right. We have our seven colors. We have seven uh, many things. You know, seven days. And we have seven, many things. Many things oh. comes in seven. Yes. Yes. Um. And yeah, and the way and to, to find your number, it's uh, like um, you add all of you, the numbers of your birthday, and until you got one digit. Because the first, when you add all of them, you're going to get two digits. And then you put... You know, you add that two digits until you got one, and that's that's gonna be your number. Mm -hmm. Your number right. is life. It's right. In, in numerology, you can find that. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm Interesting. Trying to, I'm trying to use a, a little bit of you know all of these ideas, um, spiritual and 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 good things, you know, to mix with um, with the normal things that we have already in the life. So. That's why my painting becomes like, uh, you know, sometimes are spiritual, sometimes are, you know, just the landscapes in, in, in to, uh, inside landscape that I feel it. Because I, uh, my paintings, I, I never copy from outside. It's just, uh, you know, memories from uh, when I was a kid and living in the Andes, all the landscapes that I use uh, always is just in my imagination. And Elizabeth is also asking in the chat, did you start using the symbols one by one in your paintings over time? Or have you used most of or all of the symbols since you've been painting? Oh, no, the symbols comes, you know, uh, with the time, you know, new symbols come, depends on, on the, the meaning that I have to put in the, in the painting. I looking for some uh, symbols and sometimes come new symbols. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, symbols are, you know, comes from the history of uh, humanity. And so always we have symbols mm -hmm. for everything. Right. Great. And I think we have time for one more question. And, and that is coming in the chat, actually. Someone's asking if you could tell us about the painting behind you. Oh, <laughs> oh this painting. Uh, it's called, um, oh, let me, let me see much better. Right there. You can see there? Yes. So, um, this painting is one of the, um, the ladies when, uh, when I just came to US, it's a um, German girl, uh, used to be my girlfriend, and one of the first paintings I did for her, and it's called um, uh, The Guardians of the, of the Mystery. You know, the seven hours again, and the top you can see uh, like uh, two, four, six and one in, in the in the bottom so seven seven again seven hours and she's like uh the goddess of my paintings you know always with um with uh moon empowerment with the incas windows and my uh you know my brushes and my uh, palette knives just trying to play with the uh, colors and the harmony of uh yeah, cool and, and warm colors. Great. Yeah, that's the painting. And I have another one in the world, but it's gonna be for the next time. <laughs> yes, or we will we will have to see your um, upcoming exhibitions or are several to choose from. Where can people go to find out more about your artwork, Pepe? Yeah, um, still, I, I'm, I would love to see people, you know, uh, if you go to the next opening in, in uh, Children's Hospital in October 14, and also in um, the other exhibition in Manassas and, and uh, Arts Factory Gallery, and it's going to be in November 3rd, and yeah, that's the two ones. I, that's another one comes on October also in Anacostia. I don't know yet the, the name, but it's going to be in, in October 12th, I think, so the opening. Anacostia Arts Center? Yeah. Yeah. And that's October 12th? Uh, 14 is uh, October 14 is, I don't know, uh, October 14th is in, in the Children's Hospital. In Anacostia, I don't know exactly the, the gallery is known, the Ar, uh, Anacostia Art Center. That was in, um, the opening was in, in September 26, I think so. Oh, oh. oh no, September 16. I can't remember very well the, the date, but it's already running in Anacostia Art Center. It's already running. I have uh, eight paintings over there. Right. Hey, and and you have yeah. a website or uh, you have an Instagram page that you use for. Yeah, you, you can see all my work and the prices and in in sizes and all of that in in Pinterest. Pinterest, okay. Yeah. You go What's Pinterest, the address? Pinterest.com slash Pepe Piedra. Okay. But Pepe Piedra. Pepe Piedra is just just P, three P's. Okay, P P P Piedra. <laughs> okay, I'm playing. Great. With you. Great. Well, we lo we love your art, uh, Pepe. It's just so fascinating. We've learned so much. And that's why I invited you back after Thank you. we yeah. had you during the start of the pandemic on the Zoom. And uh, you were so interesting. And I knew I saw that you were doing so much work. You've been producing so much lately. And um, it'll be interesting to see some of your exhibitions and see your work in person. Thank you ever so much again, Pepe, and thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you everybody for yes. coming into the session, and um, I'm glad you you invite me for this interview. So, um, you know, thanks for having me. And and join us next Monday for culinary traditions of the diaspora Latinoamericana, and Pepe will be on the panel. 
and uh, of, along with a variety of other people, everyone will just share for a few minutes about their their family food traditions from across the Americas. Yeah. Happy um, Happy uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, which is September fifteenth through October fifteenth. So. Everyone, uh, thank you again for joining us and have a great rest of the evening. Good night. Good night. Thank you.